Congo, and it was the neighboring countries about the rivers, and it was the capital of Congo where it is a King Shasa. And the river Congo is a lifeline, or the lifeline for the people who are living in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And here the Congo is completely located in the equatorial region where the climatic condition is very hot as well as very wet. And every day in the evening time around 4 o'clock there is a heavy rainfall. That's the reason why that rainfall is known as a 4 o'clock rainfall. Now, move to the next one that is about the vegetation. What's the vegetation here? Growing forest area. Right? V E G E T A T I O. Now most of the Democratic Republic of the Congo is covered with the tropical evergreen rainforest. Evergreen means what? Throughout the whole year, throughout the life here, this area is completely covered with the thick forest. And even the land is also completely covered with the greenery. And here you can see there will be the huge leaves which will overlap on each other. And even the ground is also completely covered with the leaves. Because I got huge leaves, the ground, the area, every one millimeter. And wherever we have the very thick forest, there we can observe the more number of wild animals which they are living in the forest. That's the reason why the Congo is known as the natural zoo of the world. This is very important beta. Why? Because the Congo is located. The place which is located in the equatorial region, the climatic changes are different. And the help of the climatic regions, the physical features will be a, the physical features will be well developed. Way. With the help of the physical features, we can see the very thick forest. I am here. Everyone knows that most of the wild animals they live in the forest, and that's the reason the Congo is known as the Congo is completely uh, considered or identified as a natural zoo of the world. Natural means here we are not keeping any animals in that particular place. Here, with the help of the nature, only most of the wild wild animals came into existence in that place. So that's the reason why it is considered as natural zoo of the world. This is very important. Yeah. Now the rainforests are the second largest and one of the biggest in the world. So here yeah, this forest is the second largest forest in the world by because throughout the whole year it is completely greeny color. Uh, yes, the temperatures will be more and at the same time there will be a heavy rainfall. Now, what are the features? How we have the features? Example, we have uh, the leaf, example, the tree. What are the important features of the tree? It will give a good sun, a good shade, and they are the one of the source of the rainfall. In the same way, what are the features of the forest? You will see here. These forests have five layers emergent, shirk, canopy, ground, and other. So here we have a different, here they will go in different areas, different chain, different shapes. Yes or no? The canopy layer has trees that are tall and long with each other so that the remaining forest does not get sunlight. They are overlapping, they will fall on each other so that this tree should not get the sunshade and this tree also should not get the sunshade. So we are overlapping, we can able to see. Yes, see? My fingers are overlapping to the other hand finger. So this comes to like this. So the help of this, what will happen? There is a no there is no chance of getting the sunrise due to the trees. The understory layer contains short trees. Now when the trees are overlapping, inside this layer we have the small trees. And even these trees also will not have in the any sun shade. So this we call as a understory. The shrub layer is made up of shrubs, ferns, and the end trees. So small plants we can able to observe under this or in between these trees. The ground layer has ferns, fungi, mosses, and small plants which do not give much sunlight to grow. 
Here few times is that without help for the satellite also they will grow automatically. In the same way, the small group of plants will grow without without the help of sunlight. Now these are dense evergreen forests. First story overlapping one each other. Second story overlapping but the small plants will grow. And third story nothing but the the small group of plants will be growing without the supply of the sunlight. So automatically with the help of the nature they are growing. So the leaves here are mostly broad and very waxy, hairy and leather like in texture. Some leaves are narrow and the tips point downwards. Always you can observe these leaves will face towards the ground. And here you can observe few leaves will observe will face towards the sun. But here these leaves are facing towards the ground. And the roots of the trees are here can be either shallow or huge that grow on the ground. Now here most of the forest area in the Congo is completely green in color. There is no chance of avoiding the sun rays. With the help of the nature, with the help of the good supply of the rain water and in the surrounding here we have the oceans, right? With the help of the, the good minerals can be captured by the roots and there is a good development of the trees and which leads to the formation of evergreen forest. Now, hope you have understood this. Now, moving to the next one that is about the wildlife. About the wildlife. Now, several species of animals such as the monkeys, chimpanzees, gorillas, pythons, lions, crocodiles, rhinos, and hippopotamus are found in this forest. Chimpanzee. Right? Where we find this? In forest. There is a wildlife which is there in the Congo. And the elephants, the lion, the geese. Most of the all sorry, most of the wild animals you will find in the forest of Congo. Now the birds such as the parrots, and some of the parrots will speak very sweetly and very and sorry the parrots are very sharp also. Whatever we say, they will try to imitate us. So here you can see the parrots, pelicans, flamingos, cuckoos, plovers, and most of the peacocks, macaws, and cockatoos are found in the large number here this which this vegetation life with the help of the vegetation there is a good life for the domestic and the few birds where there is a good natural beauty we can able to observe in this congo by outside is very beautiful when they we go inside there will be a danger but because all the wild animals living place is there that's why it is very risky to go inside the rivers of the DRC have a variety of fishes and dolphin. What is the aquatic animal of our country or the national I mean, national aquatic animal of our country is dolphin. Mostly we can find this in the river Ganga in the north direction. In the same way here we can be able to observe the peacocks, dolphins mostly in the Congo region. And it is a place to the alligators and crocodiles. So, Congo is how it is very beautiful. In the same way, it is very dangerous also. Now, what are the economic resources? Economic resources. Economic means what better? Making money. Financially getting development. And what are the sources? And what are the sources we are getting education now? Nothing but the phone, laptop, TV. To all this we are getting the knowledge. Yes or no? In the same way here also what are the economic resources where the Congo people are completely benefited the help of the different things. What are the resources we will see now? Farming means growing food crops and cash crops. Plantation, agriculture and mining are the major economic activities. Not only the agriculture work but also they are going for the Mining. What is the mining? Digging the ground very deep inside to get the minerals. No? Here, with the help of the machine, we can get the ground water. That is a drilling machine. There is a bore. Once we put the switch on, we will get the water from the ground. In the same way, here we will be having the open 
well. We need to fetch the water from them. So that is also a form of resource. In the same way, here the most of the Congo people they will go for the mining. They will dig the ground very deep inside and they will get the different minerals. Now, DRC is one of the major forms of producing countries in the world. Copper, petrol, gold, silver, tin, uranium, and diamonds are mined here. The most important jewels will be formed or will be getting or will be mined in the Congo place. Now, rubber is found in abundance here. Rubber means eraser. Not only really that eraser, but also here the tubes, the pipes, right? the tubes, the tires which we are using for the huge vehicles. For such rubber also we are going in the different. So we are having the industries in the Congo. And they will supply the rubber tires throughout the whole world. And the main cash crops include the coffee, palm oil, rubber, cotton, sugar, tea and cocoa. And not only this cassava. Cassava is like uh, you need the lakamu no beta. Sweet potato. In the same way, it will be with the help of the cassava, they will make the flour. I think pindi. Yes, and you will make the chapatis with the jogger and the wheat. No, in the same way, with the help of the cassava also, they will make the flour. What they will do first, they will peel out the cassava. Cassava will be like this. First, what they will do, they will remove the brown color part. Then they will cut into the small pieces. They will keep under the sun to get dry. After that, they will mix. After they will make into a powder. Why? Because they will be telling that here this is a very tasty and very healthy food. So, hope you understood this. The important cash crops. Cash crops means what? The things which are helpful to make the more amount of money. That is a cash crop, food crop which we consume in our daily life that is a food crop now moving to the next one that is about the life of the people how the people are living in this congo the people of the congo lead a tough life very horrible life why because every day there is a heavy rainfall at four o'clock there is a four o'clock rainfall and this place is very hot and the living the sorry the Completely, there is a dense forest. You can able to see where the very huge and very dangerous wild animals are living. So, in the completely the dangerous zone, the people are living. Might be this farm is a very beautiful place. We have the complete the natural beauty over there, but it is at the same time it is very dangerous for the people who are living in the Congo. And the Kinhasa. So the Kinshasa, the mineral, the Kinshasa, the capital of Congo is known as the rich city of Lumbashi. Sorry, the capital city is Kinshasa and the mineral rich city is Lumbashi and the port city of Matavi and Kananga. So there are the four three important cities which are there in the Congo. One is recognized as a capital city, Kinshasa. And one is which is recognized as a mineral rich city that is Lumbashi. So Lubum, Lubumashi. And the port city is known as a Matadi and Kananga. So the cassava is the staple food. How we how the rice is the staple for staple food for us? Why? Because here for morning, evening, or throughout the day also few people will consume only the rice. And few people will opt for different breakfast. And they will even the chapatis also they will take in the evening. Mostly the North Indian, South Indians, mostly they will prefer to have the rice. That's the reason why the staple food is the rice for us. Rice, sorry. Rice is the staple for the, for the Indians. Now the main tribes, how we have the Koyas, Gons, right? In the same way here also. The different tribal people who are living in the Kong and for them there are different names. They are Pygmy, Bantu, Yanomami and Kuli. Most of the tribes follow a semi-nomadic lifestyle. Nomadic means moving from one place to another place. And 
what's the semi-nomadic here? The people, they will move from the one place to another place in search of food. And at the same time, they will move from one place to another place in search of vegetation. Where they will be able to do the very good cultivation. Means growing the food crops. For such reason, they will move from the one place to another place. That's why here the tribal people of the Congo is known as a semi-nomadic people. As they move from one place to another. Now, the pygmies can be formed in the western central Africa, central Africa, Democratic Republic. So, here in all these places we can able to find the pygmies. And Bantu is mostly in DRC. And Kuli tribe has almost 65,000 people and can be found in Papua New Guinea. And Yanomami tribe can be found in the southern peninsula and northern Brazil. Here, how the Adilabad is famous in our state for the Gonas, for the Kundadoras, and for the Koyas. In the same way, here also, these Congos are very important for the few different people. They are living in different, different places. Only the selected group of or selected tribal people only will live in such areas. Now, here, wherever the people are there, they are completely habituated to the conditions, whatever they take place in the particular location. Hope you have understood till here. Now, with this, we have done our lesson number 5. I better. And remaining the notes, everything will send you. Thank you.